What's going on guys? It's your boy Beats by Ash, back at it again with another banger of a video. And today we are going to be diving into our second Lost Caverns of Ixalan draft on the channel. Now, if you saw the first one, you know that it kind of went out on a dud. So today we are going to attempt to go out on a bang and hopefully we can get a nice juicy trophy with this deck. Recently, I've been thinking in this set, I really need to be making my decision on what deck I want to play quite a bit sooner than I would in other formats. There are a lot of cards at common that are generally just filler compared to other sets. And what it ends up being is that late into the pack, you're in a situation where a lot of the cards are very below average playables. And so if you try to hold out to potentially pivot to whatever the open lane is, you're going to end up with a lot of bad cards in your deck no matter what, but you'd rather have a lot of the worst cards that actually have synergies with what you're trying to accomplish. And so I found that I'm almost kind of like soft forcing or drafting with a preference in accordance to whatever the powerful card or powerful cards I started out with in order to have a better coherent strategy by the end of the draft. So without further ado, let's get into the goo. All right, hopping into pack number one here, our rare is Anim Pakal. All thousand moon this is definitely a card i've been blown out by quite a few times and super excited to see it in this pack it's just a straight up bomb and bombs are hard to answer other than that there's the spring loaded saw blades which is just a good interaction in any control white deck there's also the geological appraiser which is just a top red uncommon and as well you can't go wrong with triumph and chomp one mana deal two damage with potential upside is always good and the Petrify, man, this pack is loaded, but I think we're just going to hedge our bets on playing a Neem Pakal. It's just the most powerful card in the pack. Pick number two, there's quite a bit of red here. Looking at the Triumphant Chomp, we've also got a Braid, just a slightly better version of Triumphant Chomp because we don't know that we're going to have a Dinosaur Synergy, but this can just answer artifacts regardless of their power and toughness, and it's just so versatile in this format. The rare hit the mother load. It's just not a good card. It just hasn't been hitting, honestly. But this is definitely a close call between these two, and Belligerent Yearling is not far behind by any means. But I think this is just an easy upgrade here. Okay, this pack is quite a bit worse, but still some standouts here. Definitely eyeing the Volatile Glyph. I mean, it's just a good two drop in just about any red deck, particularly good in an aggressive strategy, which is what our deck is incentivized to be with a Neem Bacall. There is a Tinkerer's Tote, another strong inclusion for this deck, but considering we already have one red card and one dual red card, I think I'd rather have the Volatile Wonder Glyph. Also of note is the Oaken Siren. This is just a card that's been overperforming recently. I mean, being able to have Vigilance and the ability to cheat out your artifacts is just really strong, but we're just going to take the two drop here and stay red. Still a couple of good red cards in this pack. That's a good sign that we picked a good starting lane. We got the Plundering Pirate here, probably going to be our pick. 3 mana 3-2 three, get a treasure is really nice, especially in our artifact-centric deck. Other than that, there is a Panicked Altazar, one I just don't want to pick up quite too early, but in your control decks, it can definitely make it. Wayne Pirates is really strong in red-blue pirates. Inverted Iceberg is one I've kind of come down on. You just don't want to play this card on turn two ever, and there's nothing really else for us in this pack. Mischievous Pup. I just think that this card is a little bit better when you know you have a couple targets to actually bounce back to hand. But let's go ahead and take up the Plundering Pirates here. <laughs> Not much red left in this pack, and there's not a lot of playables here either. I mean, I'm probably going to take this Ancestor's Aid. It's just the card most likely to go into our deck. I'm kind of down on Council of Echoes. I don't see myself getting to turn 6 a lot of the time, and especially having to play around the Descend mechanic is sometimes difficult when you're not in black. Archaeologist is one that I've also kind of came down on. I thought I liked including this in my white controlling decks, but a lot of the time you'd rather just have a bunch of four drops than a single five drop. We're going to go ahead and take the combat trick. So it looks like all the red has been eaten up by this point. 
and as well there's not a single white card here kind of left with the scraps at this point I think I'm inclined to take a blue card here just because there's a chance we could leave this bomb on the sideline and just go red blue pirates I think the River Herald Scout is probably more high priority than the Unlucky Drop because two drops are just so important in this format. And Orzaka Puzzle Door is just one you only want to include in those late game attrition decks, which is not what our deck is aiming to do here. So we'll just go ahead and take the River Herald Scout, assuming we end up blue. Not much left in this pack either. I think this is just an easy hidden red land here. It's the card that's most likely to make our deck. If I had the choice, I don't really want to play any of these. I would probably pick up the Acrobatic Leap if we didn't have this hidden land in the pack. Okay, so we've got a Sahili's Lattice. I mean, I think this card is way better if you have a dinosaur, but the fact it has the artifact keyword is nothing to be shy about either way. Yeah, now that I look at it, I think I'd honestly rather just take the Acrobatic Leap. I think this card is predominantly playable in your red-green dinosaur decks, and so far that's not what we're trying to do. Nothing really here of interest at this point. I'll probably pick up the Sage of Days. I think it's the most likely to make it into our deck. And I've kind of come up on this card because being able to put stuff in your graveyard is of high utility, depending on what synergies you have. <laughs> Hit the mother load ends up coming back, but we won't be the one taking it today. Panicked Altasar is a decent inclusion. If we get some more attrition pieces, potentially in white, I might see us playing this, but probably not. Guess I'll pick up the hidden cataract here. If we end up playing blue, it'll probably make the deck, but in your aggressive decks, you really don't want more than one cave. Okay, and the mischievous pup ends up coming back to us. Maybe this is a sign that we'll end up playing white after all. I mean, we are incentivized to use our bombs, so don't mind if I do. I think that card went really late. Not going to be playing any of these cards. Or Zaka Puzzle Door? Maybe. So after pack one, we ended up pretty even on what our second color might be with two subpar blue cards and two average white cards to say the least. Very unfortunate because you kind of want to focus on one color in pack one in this set from what I've seen so far just because it's really difficult to pivot. I think the best card in this pack for us is probably the Tinkerer's Tote. I don't mind the Scampering Surveyor but it's better in an attrition based deck and a Neem Pakal as well as Volatile Wonderglyph do way better in your aggro variants. I think Tinkerer's Tote is pretty decent for us because it allows us to create additional objects and potentially we could pick up some craft also we've got the market gnome i think this is just strictly only usable in those control decks and this card kind of misses the mark if your opponent goes one drop flyer two drop flyer three drop flyer so it's probably going to be the tinkerer's tote don't care too much about the dino automaton and i don't want to play black Oh, another good black card here. Unfortunately, we're not in the lane to play black, so it doesn't look like we're going to be doing that today. But there is quite a few good white cards in this pack, so probably end up cutting blue. Go ahead and put those in the side deck for now. I think I'll take the Petrify here. Probably the most versatile card, and I think it overperforms in aggro versus control, which is what we're trying to do. Don't mind wheeling the Whirlpool. Maybe the a Market Gnome if our deck shapes up to be um, more of trying to play the long game. But this is just an easy Petrify here oh my gosh and we get past a pick three breaches this card is literally insane if your opponent does not answer this on the turn it's played they basically automatically lose and we already have one pirate in the form of plundering pirate other than that not really interested in anything else in this pack if breaches wasn't here i'd probably take the malamat war scribe because our deck is shaping up to be more aggressive and i think when you create a lot of objects and we have stuff like tinkerer's tote this card really increases in value but this is just an easy breaches wow now we are left on a crossroads here with a really difficult pick we got the caparati sunborn which is just a really strong card i mean most things that provide good stats and also offer discover are just strong picks versus the number one red creature at common goblin tomb raider allowing us to start the game early and finish the game fast so this is definitely a tough pick i'm gonna have to check what caparati is right now okay so it looks like the caparati sunborn is slightly better than the Goblin Tome Raider. So I think since we're already kind of split 50-50, we're just going to pick it up here. Unfortunately, we have to leave the Goblin Tome Raider on the side, but we get offered another one versus our first Triumphant Chomp as well. Considering we have a Breaches, I think Goblin Tomb Raider might be slightly better than the Chomp. I think we're just going to take the Goblin Tomb Raider here. 
One drops are just so important in this format, and I cannot state that enough. Nothing really left of value in this pack. I think I'm okay to pick up the Brazen Blade Master. Since we already have Breaches, this card slightly increases in value, and as well, Tinkerer's Tote works decently well with it. Not really interested in picking anything else up here. <laughs> Ooh, and we do end up finding the Deconstruction Hammer, which is shaping up to be pretty decent in our aggressive strategy. You definitely want to have at least one form of artifact removal in this format, and this is a great time to pick this up. Master's Guide Mural. Unfortunately, we're not playing blue because this is just a great inclusion in any control deck. But we do have the Glorifier of Suffering, a card I've kind of come up on. We already have so many three drops in this deck. I think I'm just going to take the Thousand Moons Crack Shot just for our curve. I mean, a two mana two two isn't the best, but I found this ability to be more relevant than it was in Wilds of Eldraine. I don't really want to pick up Market Gnome, but it might just be the best card for us to play. I think if we end up having enough artifact synergies, it'll work in the deck, but I don't really want to have to play it. Otoclay and Landmark ends up coming back. I mean, if our deck shapes up to be playing more of an attrition game, I could see us throw it in. I mean, it's a decent card. Definitely don't sleep on this, but not one you want to prioritize. Okay, we end up getting past another 2-drop. This one is just going to have no implications in our deck. We want to have a base amount of 2-drops, and our 3-drop slot is already super clogged, so I don't feel bad about taking this here. Not too much of interest left in this pack. I think one Whirlpool is good in just about most white decks, probably slightly better than the cave. I'm pretty sure we already have one cave, so I think we'll be fine. Okay, we've got another cave here, but we've also got a, I would say, an average two drop. I think this one is just about the same value as the Wonder Glyph, and I don't mind picking this up here. It's probably better than the Crack Shot and as well the Burning Sun Cavalry. Nothing really to see here. Okay, so we ended up after pack two with quite a few playables. Typically, I want to have at least 15 going into pack three, and we kind of just exceeded expectations here. Rare con Cosmium Confluence, kind of a dud. I think when you have three caves, it becomes like an above rate card, but even then, it just costs so much, and it's not what we're trying to do. We got the Rune Lurker Bat, which is just a top priority for what our deck wants to do, and in contention with the Rune Lurker Bat is Itali's Favor. Honestly, one of the most underrated cards at the beginning of the format, but people People are starting to see why this card is so good. I think this is just an easy Ruin Lurker bat though because our three drop slot is still pretty clogged with premium cards. So I think I'm just going to slam the bat here. Ooh, we've got the opportunity to pick up a second Abrade. This is like the first pack where we could have chose the Chomp or the Abrade and we're getting the same selection again, but Abrade is just too good to pass up on here. So we're going to have to slam this. Hopefully we get the Militia on the crack back, but either way, I'm feeling pretty good about this deck. Wow, Huatli Poet of Unity is going very, very late here. I think this is just a first pick slam anytime you can afford to play this. And we've got a couple of things that let us fix with our treasures, but it's just not available to us at the moment. Very unfortunate. We could pick up another Quicksand Whirlpool, or we could get an Adaptive Gem Guard, which I think works really well once you have a Tinkerer's Tote and a couple other things to make objects, but is that better than the Mischievous Pups? I'm just not too sure. I think Mischievous Pup is probably the safest thing to do here. Adaptive Gem Card overall just been one that I think you need to have a few key cards to actually get the full value out of. And even though our three drop slot is clogged, this is just a, a good on rate card. So nothing really left for us in this pack. I guess we could pick up the Dino Automaton. It's a decent curve topper, but not one you really want to have in your deck versus the Archaeologist, which I think is fine. I'm not too sure which one of these is better. I think I'd rather just have a four drop than a five drop. And this lets us push through for damage, which is kind of what our game plan is. So I guess I'll play the Dino Automaton. Very unfortunate we're not in blue here. You got two premium cards in the form of Waterwind Scout and Inverted Iceberg, which I wouldn't be dissatisfied playing either of those. Rumbling Rock Slide is decent as a one of. That might just be our pick here versus a second Burning Sun Cavalry. I think Burning Sun Cavalry is just, it's just a vanilla 2-2. Two -two. We already have a couple of those in the sideboard, so probably just pick up the Rock Slide and hopefully we don't have to play any of these cards. Another Glorifier of Suffering up for grabs. I mean, I wouldn't be dissatisfied with that versus the Hidden Courtyard. I mean, I don't know that this deck 
really wants to be playing multiple hidden lands. But at the same time, how good is the Glorifier suffering? I don't have a lot of things we want to sacrifice. I could be sold either way, but I think one hidden land is just about where you want to be. So I think I'll take the Glorifier just in case it ends up making the deck. Another Acrobatic Leap. Not excited to see that versus our first land cycler. Something that I also just really don't want to play. I think I care more about combat than I do about cycling. So I guess I'll pick up the second lead, but it probably doesn't make it. Altasar, I think we already have one of these. Yeah, we do. So I don't know that that's even going to make it into the deck. Nothing really here of interest, but we'll just pick this up. See what happens. Thousand Moons Crack Shot. I mean, it's another 2 2 that's slightly better than Burning Sun Cavalry. You know, maybe we end up playing it. Doesn't look like we're getting back that Sunshot Militia. Very unfortunate for us. And it doesn't look like we're going to be adding anything else to our deck here. I'll just take the red card. Ooh, but we do get offered a second Quicksand Whirlpool, which might just make our deck, considering we're kind of on the edge for playables. And this is just a good interaction. And we end up getting the Archaeologist back. Okay. I mean, at this point, I might be down to play this just to have some decent top end. And we've got a couple artifact synergies. Not playing anything here. Looks like this is going to be the 40 we're rolling with starting out. Hopefully, we have some better luck than last time. So, let's get into the games. All right. Match number one here with our Bussin Red White deck. And we're going to be on the play. You gotta love to see it. We got the turn one Goblin Tomb Raider. We also got the Abraid, which is always nice to have. Let's go ahead and drop down our creature here. And our opponent doesn't have a turn one play, and we're just gonna slam a two drop. This is nice. I feel like I'm doing the aggro thing for the first time on the channel. For so long, I was the one just passing priority and getting fucked on. But now, the tides have changed. I guess we just swing with everybody. See if he wants to give us a good trade with our Ancestor's Aid. Aha! Uh -huh. He knows. He knows too much. It's okay. You can tap out with your Oaken Siren. I'll allow it. I mean, I'll just upgrade. It's fine. Sure, bud. Go for it. You're not getting to turn six, man. Like, I'm hammering this down. We need, we need another land, and we're just rolling. Honestly, I think we just want to make an action here. We'll take it in case he has another land and he plays like a one drop maybe, but maybe I should have just mitigated the damage. Oh, well. Who cares? We're slamming face, baby. One land in a dream. Okay, never mind. All right, we just top backed a Neem Pakal. This card's fucking broken, and I'm pretty sure it's going to generate us a token before damage is dealt, which means our Goblin Tomb Raider is getting him for two instead of one, which is absolutely unfair. He needs to have an immediate answer for this card, or we just pretty much win. I mean, we did the thing. We went one, two, three, four. Okay, we are doing the one, two, three, four thing. GG, my man. No confounding riddle is going to save you here, my guy. Okay, this is just broken. I feel bad, but at the same time, I don't. Because we need W's on the channel. Easy game. Let's go. Okay, well, we do have a two drop, but we don't have a red land for our Neem Bacall. That's kind of irritating, but we can still go one, two. I think this is passable. Considering we're on the draw, I feel like it's decently likely that we get a red source. And if we get a red source and play Neem Bacall, we pretty much just steal the game again. So I think I'm fine with this. Going one drop, two drop, I mean, it's just always a nice thing to do here. Vanguard of the Rose, solid two drop, okay. Hmm. Could ruin Lurker Bat and attach. I think it's just better to drop the two drop. Maybe he'll accept the trade before he puts out an object. Play Fired Briggs, that's pretty good for him. We kind of need one of those right now. 
Do we want to trade our two drop for a clay fired bricks? I mean, not really. Okay, a land is a land. Can't complain there. Is it still better with Mischievous Pups or is it better to Rune Looker Bat and attach the hammer? I think Mischievous Pups still might be a little bit better because it uses more of our mana. I think taxing him on a turn like this is completely fine because we're stopping him from using like an old tech cloud guard. Okay, never mind. He's not even going to pay. I mean, he must just have that uh, three mana confounding riddle to counter something. Can't counter the rune lurker bat though. Sorry, my guy. Really need to hit a red source here quickly. Wow, he just passed. I mean, I don't know what his hand is. Very few times you actually just want a full pass in this format. And again, wow. Really would like a red mana, but I mean, Petrify isn't terrible. I mean, considering we're on the offense here. Bro, what are you doing? Quicksand Whirlpool on our Rune Lurker bat? That seemed not worth it at all. Like, what? I mean, finally he has a creature. Might be a little bit too late, though. Good choice to put that on bottom. That wasn't doing anything for you, buddy. We finally pick up the mountain here. Let's go ahead and slam a Nimpakal. Honestly, I think I'm down to just petrify his clay fired bricks. I think we still keep this on top. I mean, if we attack here, this is just game. Tap that guy down, because you a little boy to me. He's going for a scry. Yes, sir, you love to see it. I only got one random bread mana to work with, but that's completely fine. GG, my man. Quick and easy 2-0 to start off the day. You love to see it. Match number two on the day, and we are hoping that all of them go short and sweet, just like the last one. Don't know if we can keep this hand. I mean, we don't have a play until turn three. Our hand is kind of defensive. I don't really like this. You got to aggressively mulligan in this format, or you're going to get left behind. Kind of unfortunate. A little bit worse than the last hand. I mean, it is playable. I think I'll just put back the Ancestor's Aid. Hopefully try to find a red land so we can get our breaches online, because that card's crazy. Goblin Tomb Raider, not what you'd like to see. A braid, no. Why are we getting flooded with the reverse mana? And our opponent is already on board. This might be a swift game two here. Yeah, I don't know about this one, Chief. We're going to need back-to-back -back mountains to even have a chance here. Let's 
Go ahead and block his armored king color. Mitigate the most damage here. Not looking good, boys. No red man off the top. It's looking like we're going to be taken down, but I guess we can get out of game one and not let our opponent know we're playing red. Kind of funny. I really haven't had the opportunity to do that so far in this set, but in Yu-Gi-Oh, that would happen all the time. You just concede before they know your deck. Okay, yeah, he has a firstborn of Gishath. Yeah, we're just conceding here. Not much we can do. Well, it was short like I asked. Just not in our favor. Don't worry about me, boys. Trust me, I'm feeling the reverse sweep coming right now. All right, we're going to have to mulligan this one. All right, well, this has both of our bombs. This is extremely playable. Let's put back the archaeologist here. Try to find a two-drop, I guess. Damn, breaches into a Neem Pakal is kind of disgusting. Because then breaches gets the guaranteed hit. Maybe we shouldn't have showed him we had the red mana yet. I mean, he's going to ramp if he's going to ramp, so I guess it doesn't really do anything. Cool. Okay, he wasn't able to ramp with this. I found this card to be very underwhelming. The times that you actually have a dino to use this effect are, like, far and few between. Because most of the good dinos cost, like, minimum four mana. Breaches is coming down, baby. Where's your answer? Show it to me. Show me the juicy abrade. Sahili's Lattice. I can't let you get away with that. You needed to develop the board, my friend. Ooh, and we get to equip the hammer. Breaches, likey. Or are we playing the Thousand Moons crack shot? Yeah, we'll just play a Neem Pakal. We'll just play a Neem Pakal. And then we're going to attack with Breaches, use Effect, get a Treasure token, and play Thousand Moons Crack Shot. I just forgot that Breach is his first strike. I mean, that's freaking broken. A Neem Pakal coming in, baby. Let's go. And now we can start making two of his creatures not be able to block, which is really dirty. I mean, it turns out just having two bombs on the board is just really unfair and oppressive. Okay. Saw that one coming a mile away. I still have a breaches, though. This card's unfair. I don't know what you're going to do, my man. I think I still want to equip the hammer here. And then we're going to exile the top card of our deck. Please, no one-mana combat trick. All right, well, it's a card. Can't play both, so... Just not gonna tap anybody down. If you want a double block, sure, man. Yeah, I don't care about your mana dork, bro. And neither do you, because that's not allowing you to play any dinos anytime soon. Honestly, let's attach the hammer to breaches. That way, in case he has an abrade, he's out of reach. And then I think we can afford to play one planes here. It just gives us more opportunities to play the top card of our deck. Breaches carry me. Carry me to victory. Down automaton. Ooh. Unfortunately, sir, my breach is his first strike. You hate to see it. Swap the equipment. Non-land? Yes, sir. Honestly? Let's kill that. Get in for six. Because even if he transforms his dinosaur, we're just going to make it to where it can't block. And then we'll slam down the Sunscribe. Looking pretty damn good for us. I mean, I guess we could also kill it with the hammer if we wanted to. River guide. And he gets a land. Yes, sir. Tali's favor. That's scary. A braid. No. Why did I remove... Why? Why did I move the enchantment over... Why did I move my equipment from my breaches? Why? Why must you do this? That was dirty. Let's go to combat. Swim with both. 
Let's scry first. Don't want that. Discard the mountain. Get a real card? Okay, it's a real card. And we're gonna get to scry with the bat. So not bad at all. Yeah, let's put it on the bat. Real card? Nope, not today. Man, it sucks that he killed our breaches. <laughs> I feel kind of bad for attaching the artifact, but I still think it was correct because it created an attacker. Gisha, no. Sir, what are you doing? Stop looking at my bat. Pick your poison, my friend. You probably killed Thousand Moons Crackshot here if you don't have a creature. Because it's going to allow me to push in for more damage. Like, yeah, the bat you're going to have to deal with, but either way, I'm putting you on a two-turn clock or a three-turn clock. Sure, sure. Two-turn clock it is, my friend. Plundering pirate. I mean, it's a creature. Yeah, you know what? It's a card. A card is a card. And we don't have a way to cycle now, so we'll just put that out. No removal, sir. No removal. Thousand Moons Crack Shot OP. This is scary. No braid off the top. Ooh, twist and turns. Sorry, bud. You're just gonna have one creature. Yeah, that's terrible. GG, man. We're going to game three. Let's go. Not getting steamrolled today, boys. We don't have a turn two play, but we have a Neem Pakal, and I think that's justifiable keeping this. A Neem Pakal broken. No turn one for you, and that's what I'd love to see. Poison dart frog. You dirty bastard. I mean, I guess we could just waste this to make a treasure token. That sounds ass. I don't know why I would think about doing that. Hopefully he doesn't mana cheat with the frog. Be kind of dirty right now. He is indeed mana cheating with the frog. R.I.P. His hand must be gas because he doesn't have a land. All right, now he has a land. His hand is indeed gas. Ooh. Wish we could have had this on turn one, man. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. I mean, we just have to put this on the board. We need to put a threat on the board. It's unfortunate because this has synergy with the tokens that Pakal creates. Especially because this gets additional tokens for every time you buff it, but... I need to put out a 3-drop, and I'm not putting Pakal out first. Yeah, that does not seem worth. I'll take the damage. I am the aggressor here, my friend. Armored Kin Caller, not what you'd like to see. I mean, I think Anim Pakal is still just the best card to play here. Like, I want to play Dino Automaton, but at the same time, I'd rather just get the 1-1 one -one counters on this uh, going already. Activate triggered effect. Sure, buddy. We can indeed race. Well, that's not good. At least my Neem Pakal is a 2-3 currently. Oh, never mind. He can use his Kin Caller. Yeah, that's just bullshit. RAP. I think we're going to lose this one, boys. And we don't have another red source, so we can't play two red cards. Um, hmm. Technically, we can Ancestor's Aid and Mischievous Pup. How good is that? I don't really know. Um, and then next turn, he's threatening the Cavern Stomper. That is really irritating. Either way, he's shoving a lot of damage down our throat. The best thing to do might be to hold Ancestor's Aid and Mischievous Pup and then just trade. I'm not against that. Unfortunately, I can't go Dino Automaton and Goblin Tomb Raider because that would be the obvious play here, but we just can't do that.
at least we'll get the treasure from this interaction so we can quicksand on his cavern stomper. He's got a combat trick. I'm scared. Okay, that's some bullshit, man. That's some freaking bullshit, man. Yeah, we might lose this one, boys. Very unfortunate. This red-green-gold card is freaking broken. Because now we're just taking five. That sucks. Does he have another interaction? He has another interaction. Wow, that sucks so bad. Yeah, no, that's just lethal. Damn, GG. I mean, he just had the god curve. What can you do? That's what I'm saying. It's like, we have these really strong, like middle of the curve cards but we're forced to play these late curve cards in our deck because we didn't get enough like above rate two drops and one drop which really sucks because that's really what we needed in this deck all right final match of the day and i promise we are ending this one on a high note we got a nimpa call and we got two lands i think this is completely keepable especially since we are on the draw here Give us a land, please. Any land. Yes, sir. That's what you like to see. And the fact he has a 1-2 instead of a 2-3 is very pivotal here. I think we'd actually have rather have the Attentive Sunscribe over Wonder Glyph here. Ooh, I've literally never seen anyone play this card. Wow, this card's kind of good if you play it on turn 2. He put it on turn three, so not as good, but I mean, this is still a decent card. Kind of like Hotfoot Gnome here. And then we'll attack with it next turn so we can go and need Pakal, not lose a creature, but get the one ones. Okay, that sucks. Land, 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 please. Yes, sir. It's what you like to see. Kind of dirty he gets to play from hand, though. This is a really broken card. Ooh, it's exactly what we needed. Let's throw out our dino here. He doesn't realize it has menace. He doesn't know. Wait, he's gonna let us do that? Brother, why are you doing this? That was terrible. You just traded a 4-drop for a 3-drop, and our 3-drop was very vulnerable. He had 1 HP. Okay, that's why he did that. That card's broke. Okay, good thing he got another land. Thank God. Thank God we needed that to happen. Very, very dirty of him. Would have loved to have a land here, because then we could have went a Neem Bacall plus the Abrade, but unfortunately, that's not what's going to happen. Petrify that. Get in for our damage. Volatile Wonderglyph to the rescue. Sir, please do not have another explore card. I mean, you have the most explore cards I've ever seen in this style of deck. Like, this deck does not work, in case you were wondering. Well, we can't abrade that. Kaisale, Larchnist, Bullshit Artist. And he can make his guy a treasure. That's kind of dirty. Kind of dirty, my friend. Looks like I'm going to have to abrade that. Not what you want to see. But I mean, we can still be taxed and get back our dino. Which is not terrible. Pay the ward one. The dino's coming back, baby. And I guess I don't get the ETB. It's kind of unfortunate. But Market Gnome to the rescue. Maybe I should have just binned Market Gnome off the Wonder Glyph, but oh well. What if I just attack with this? Am I willing to trade our three drop for a two drop that extracts extra value? Maybe. Quite possibly. Okay, I'll do this all day. Why does this guy keep giving us the trades we want? 
Like, he's really holding out to get the 1-1 counters on this, and that's kind of dirty. It's not an explorer, but that's a broken creature. Don't want to go into the late game with this guy. His hand is broke. Ooh, that kind of works, though. Hopefully he attacks with Cavern Stomper. We can get the discount on Quicksand, and that'd be pretty good. No explore for you, sir. No explore. You do not want to pay the tax on Cavern Stomper. Don't worry, it doesn't have an effect. I didn't mean to hover over it. Kind of hate how it lets your opponent know when you hover over something, because I feel like a lot of the time, they wouldn't notice the effect until then. Well, shit. That's just broken. That is just straight up broken. Man is kind of useless to him, so. He's just passing. What the heck? I mean, we need a land to do something. Bro, pay the tax on your Cavern Stomper and attack. Like, what are you waiting for? He has two Cavern Stompers. That's freaking disgusting. Think we're going to go to game two here. I mean, I don't know how I'm outing that. Six mana, seven, seven, and... Two bombs in the form of Hulking Raptor plus Kite Sail Larsenus is not a happy sight. Thank God that thing doesn't have trample. And we could bounce Petrify. It doesn't solve the issue, but it makes it slightly better. And if we can draw a land, we'll be in a better position. Land off the top? No, I didn't want to have to do this. Why? Why must you do this to me? Anim Pakal has been waiting to revalue for so long. brother why do you have so many bombs i've never been able to play green because i just don't get offered the bombs these people are dirty high rollers i tell you green blue green blue is not real it's just bomb.deck aka mo bomba well it's 11 down the throat i think i'm cool with that Not good, not good at all. Alright, we have five mana. We're always using three on this. We have two available. I mean, I guess we just have to do this. I doubt we'll live long enough to tell the tale, but if we do, Anim Pakal is going to put in work. This guy's just accrued so much advantage with his bombs. Okay, now he has another greedy card. This guy's deck is so greedy. What does this even do? Oh, so it's just a 3-mana 6-6. Six, six. That's freaking broken. Like, wait, well, why is this in the set? Why are so many bombs just, like, outrageously difficult to respond to? I think we're going to game 3 here. I have a strong feeling about this. I mean, I think we're going to game two here. I have a strong feeling about this. Land off the top. R.I.P. Yeah, we're still taking eight. We were taking seven if he didn't buff that. GG. Game two, my friend. Game number two. Man, I am having a tough time in the Lost Caverns for these videos. But I'm not going out without a fight. And this is an extremely keepable hand. Okay, no turn one play. Can I steal the deal? Maybe. Maybe, baby. 
All right, bro, you're playing green blue. There's no removal. Don't pretend there is. Well, let's pay our tax now. I'm sorry, sir. I can't let you do that. Anim Pakal is here! Let's go, baby! AKA Goblin Tomb Raider's best friend. You love to see it. And we've got the Petrify to clean things up. We're looking kind of nice right now. Oh, this forces you to block it? Okay, that's kind of good. I didn't know that was the case. I mean, he answered our bomb, but we still got the artifact, so we're in a decent position here. Slam another artifact for insurance. Five down the throat. Never fear, Petrify is here. That's actually the first time I've seen someone get value from that. I mean... No reason to be hasty with the Petrify. We're taking it nice and slow. You know you have to block that. Yes, sir. Get our free scry. Let's go, baby. Taking it to game three. We're going to deep waters here in enemy territory. I genuinely think the only way we can beat this guy is if we go one, two, three, four. I mean, we have the two, and we have the three and the four. I think this is keepable. I mean, there's only two, two one drops in our deck. Hopefully, Wonderglyph can push through. Never mind, we pick up the land. You love to see it. Don't love to see that. It's not a nice card, sir. And he just reveals the Hulking Raptor, and we have no response for that. That's freaking scary. Well, I don't know what we can do here. I guess just throw this down. Trade offer. Okay, okay. Well, Wonderglyph, find us a removal, my man. Find us some removal, my friend. I mean, maybe it's just this. Nah, it's just the mountain every time. And it's not the worst thing that we could find. We really need a removal, though, because he's just going to slam a bomb. I already know what's coming. Hulking Raptor is just so oppressive, man. Hulking Raptor into Cavern Stomper. Jesus. Jesus, man. It's freaking broken. He's taking us to Bomb City. Bomb, Bomb City, bitch. Cogwork Wrestler. You motherfucker. Well, we're getting decimated. That was pretty fucking broken. Yeah, Cogwork Wrestler is just gonna put us over the hill, man. I don't know what to say. They're out here rolling us in the Lost Caverns. I'm gonna need you to smash the like button on this one if you wanna see more content because they're out here dissipating our gems with these bombs, man. Like, this card is so oppressive. This guy actually has the functioning tools to make this archetype work, which I've never seen. So, I mean, it's kind of a, a cool thing to see, but really sucks when you're on the other end of the spectrum. I mean, yeah, we just have to take it. We need a removal here. And he draws his other bomb. Like, my bombs are not on the same level as his bombs. This card is like a top five green card. I mean, the fact this has Ward, you basically can't interact with it. He's going 4-drop, and then the next turn, he's going to have 7 mana. And if you have something like a Poison Dart Frog, 
you're just stealing the game. Like, this is just so ridiculous. And then Discord is just a three mana 6-6 six, six because he wouldn't play green if he didn't have an all dinosaur deck. So this card is just straight up unfair. Anim Pakal at least requires some setup. Like, I have to be able to get in with other creatures. And that's kind of difficult to do when you don't have other premium cards. Whereas this, you can just have a bunch of low-value dinosaurs and this is just broken. This, you don't have to have anything. This is just a broken card. Like, our bombs are not the same. Well, we got some stats, but I don't think that's going to be nearly enough. And he has another Pathfinding Axe Jaw. When is it my turn to play Green Judge? Yeah, that's just dirty. Nice. I mean, at least he doesn't have another combat trick. We need specifically a Petrify... So we can play Nimpakal. Okay, we don't get shit. Yeah, we're fucked. GG, man. GG. We are fucked. Well, looks like that's gonna be it. I mean, that's what you get for not drafting a bunch of oppressive bombs and just picking every dinosaur card in the game. Very unfortunate for us, but well played by our opponent. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. To me, I think the format is fun when you get to do what you want. I found it quite a bit more fun in the beginning stages when people didn't know how to effectively evaluate all these lesser impact cards because it made it to where there was more decision making towards the end of the pack during the draft. But now that everybody has kind of watched a guide at this point, it's getting a little bit stale with people just having decks with all bombs and the removal and the answers being very difficult to find during the draft. And it feels like I'm kind of being pulled into a couple of the same directions during every single draft if I want to build the best deck for the seat that I'm in. But still, I think this is a fine set and I've been enjoying it. Sorry I couldn't finish this one off with another W, but I hope you guys enjoy this. Thank you so much for getting this far in the video. If you got this far, put RIP Breaches in the comments because Breaches is our boy and he just didn't get to do the dirty work this time. But there will be another time, so make sure to look forward to that. And as always, if it's not the goo, it's got to go. Peace. Ooh, is that indigo?